Hello, this is Lynn from Farmer Street Pantry. We're starting our series of conversations with Food Talk Live. And today we're talking about fundamentals of flavor balance. So today's goal is to talk about what you might be thinking of when you're in the kitchen and looking in your pantry for something to cook. Um, and it's limited because your access to markets and to stores has been reduced. Uh, your supplies are, are maybe dwindling, so you don't have as many ingredients at hand to create something. So I was looking in my pantry. I have a lot of grains and beans. And I decided that as part of our talk today on flavor, that maybe we could take these ingredients, which tend to be a little bit more bland, uh, we're going to focus on grains, or I'm sorry, on beans today, and create something a little bit more interesting. But first, I, while we're doing that, I wanted to also discuss fundamentals of building flavor and looking at what some of the experts say on uh, their process of, of thinking about flavor and trying to develop flavor in their dishes. So what we're going to be cooking today is a uh, recipe that comes from my family and my personal history. By the way, hi, Mom. This was beans and bread, and this comes from the Depression, um, an Italian cuisine, Mediterranean, where you're combining simple, basic, common things uh, to create something which is actually quite delicious. It sounds very prosaic and mundane, but it's, it's actually quite a delicious thing. But I wanted to take it to a new level. And because I focus on orchard fruit in my business, um, I wondered what it would be like to have beans and bread and top it with something that I call an orchard sauce. Now, with, I have a product that's called Spice Cherries. And in the photo for the announcement of this event, I, um, I had this image of Spice Cherries, which is a pan sauce on pork. And the way the culinary winds have been blowing for me a little bit recently, I've been veering away from meat and dairy. So cherries go great with meat and dairy, but how do they go with something else? Um, also apples. I love apples and we have, we are here in apple country. So I really wanted to incorporate apples. I think apples and cherries have a great affinity with each other. So anyway, that's what we're doing on the stove. So let's get to that. I started heating up the, a little bit of olive oil and I have some ingredients here and I will try to show them to you. So we have, as a base, uh, a, a flavor base, we have onions and then also peppers, sweet red and spicy green. And we're going to throw those in first. Um, but also apples, which came from Owen's Orchard, cherries, which came from Cahoon Farms in Wolcott, New York, uh, some fresh spinach, which I purchased at the farmer's market last week, some parsley. And, and then we have some other aromatics as well. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Okay, we'll do the onions. And I wanted to get them going so we can caramelize them a little bit. Okay, so they're cooking away, and we're just going to let them go for now. I think maybe I'll put the peppers in as well, so I don't forget. You know, I want to really thank everybody for coming and joining us today. Um, I miss you all so much, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, we're all going to have some stories to, to share with each other on the other side of this. Um, and I, I really miss seeing people when we're out selling, um, hearing their food stories. That's a big inspiration for me. So 
please share your suggestions, questions that you have. Ron is in the next room. He's writing any questions that you put in the comments section down. So if you want, if you have a question about flavor, um, we're also going to continue the series. So anything that might cross your mind that, that maybe you'd like us to cover. I have some questions that have already been sent and we're going to address those at the end of our discussion this afternoon. So make sure you send them in. He has a, a Zoom meeting at one o'clock. So make sure you get them in in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes and, um, and then we'll be able to cover them. So um, what do the experts say about flavor and flavor balancing? Well, I, I always over-research everything. So I went to the godfather of food writing, Harold McGee. And if you haven't read him, it, he's just absolutely amazing. And he goes into all of the science behind flavor components and the human history, too, which I find fascinating. Um, you know, the, the flavor is important. We have been in an agricultural society, an agriculturally based state. Most of humanity is at this point uh, for about 10,000 years. And the food that we're eating is very grain based, um, also meat based. And those tend to um, certainly grains and legumes not have an awful lot of flavor. We come from a hunter gathering species and there was a lot of roaming the, the land, finding and remembering food sources that were highly diverse and told us a lot about our environment. So when we're in the kitchen cooking, we are the same creatures that were roaming the savannas trying to find and remember good food sources and remember um, combinations. And the way food tastes tells us an awful lot about what the plant is trying to do. A lot of the very spicy foods is actually a defense mechanism for plants. Um, and in some cases, uh, it represents toxicity or uh, poison, but in, in many cases, it's just a, a, a defense of the plant that actually stimulates us and makes us um, uh, makes flavors become more interesting and, and deeper. So, um, so anyway, so Harold McKee, I strongly suggest this is really recipe creation from fundamentals. So I, I really recommend that, uh, that you check out Harold McGee. Another one, is, <clears throat> excuse me, that I love Edna Lewis. She is the doyen of Southern American cooking. She grew up, um, the daughter, granddaughter of slaves, and she really lived close to the land. She lived in, she grew up in a town that her, her grandfather, who was an emancipated slave, um, <clears throat> helped build. And so they live very close to the land. And her emphasis is local and fresh. And that is an important part of flavor as well, because obviously flavors degrade as you, um, as they, as food sits around and, uh, after it's been harvested. <clears throat> now, um, another book that is really terrific that, that I love is called the flavor Bible. And this is by Karen Page and Andrew Dornenberg. And they, this is an encyclopedia and it is a wonderful, thorough, compilation of, of ingredients and flavors um, that are recommended by award-winning chefs from <clears throat> across the world. And this is, this is definitely, if you want to be released from the confines of uh, and, and very prescribed recipes, this is a great book to refer to because, for example, with today's recipe, we're doing beans um, with an orchard sauce, which has fruit, a little unusual. So I went to check in the book and under beans, I had red beans available because I forgot to uh, get my cannellini beans soaking in time. So I had canned red beans. So that's what we're dealing with. So I went to uh, beans and then it gives you all of these, the different combinations that work really well. 
uh, scrolling further down, I saw under white beans, there was more option in terms of the list of potential ingredients. So and I got a little excited about that because I saw apricots, um, bourbon, sounded really good, and beer. So started thinking about, hmm, may, fruit might work. Um, something other than wine, I put wine in our red cherries product, but I wanted to try something different. And I found um, an open can of Critz Farms Pig City Porter, which is a dark beer, really flavorful. I use it in our mincemeat vegan baked beans. And uh, I thought maybe we try that. <clears throat> and also um, just wanting to balance out the acid with it. So I have some, a couple of vinegars. I have olive on Brooklyn, Gravenstein, apple vinegar, and then from Lombardi's traditional balsamic vinegar. So, so that, that helps you, you know, you, once you get started, you can start drawing on your, um, you know, what's written resources, but also on your memory of things that, that work for you in the kitchen <clears throat> in terms of building a recipe. Now, beyond that, what's a little more current when I was looking into what's available online, there's a company called Cook Smarts that has some wonderful infographics that you can access. Um, this is the free version. Anything beyond this, I was going to have to start laying out some cash. So I decided to create a, a homemade flavor profile of the four, or I'm sorry, the five components of taste. <clears throat> and flavor, taste is a, is a part of flavor. Um, it's not the whole picture of flavor. There, and a very important picture of flavor is, is also aromatics. But in the taste side, we have salty, umami, spices, bitter, sour, and sweet. Spices don't typically come in <clears throat> on something like this, but this particular website pulled them in, but I think they did a really good job of showing how flavors can complement, enhance each other, and also balance each other. So for example, when thinking about the, the different flavors that I wanna put in, um, there's a little bit of sour and sweet that's gonna go into this recipe. Um, a little bit salty, a little bit umami, excuse me, um, not so much bitter. And maybe I'm, that might be something that I might need to introduce. Maybe a little bit bitterness in the spinach might come in. Um, spices and sweet, not a, spices in the standpoint, there's some hot pepper and I'll put some black pepper in and a little bit of sweet. Um, and then there'll, there'll be a little bit of sour helping to enhance the sweet through the vinegar. So this is kind of a, kind of a nice, diagram. I mean, I, I really, I don't have this uh, tucked into my notebook all the time, but when I found this, I thought it was very helpful. So you can go to cooksmarts.com. They're a menu planning service and it's a subscription, but um, you know, I'll give them a little shout out here because they had some really nice infographics. So I, I recommend them. So, all right, we, I think we need to move along here with our sauce. I'm going to add the fruit because we have a lot of, there's a lot of caramelization with the onions, building flavor. And I'm turning the, uh, turning the beans on in the back. Whoops. I don't want the kitchen to go up in flames. And I'm going to season with a little bit of my favorite Syracuse salt. And if you haven't heard of this company, it's wonderful. They are actually creating historic um, salt from a salt, well, a salt, a brine well that is um, kind of in the traditional area of salt making towards 
destiny towards the mall. So this is their flake salt, which is comes from that well. And it's very, it, it's very clean. Uh, they have it tested all the time. So Libby and Dave are just doing a great job with that. Okay, I'm going to deglaze with a little bit of a corner. And also get some of the vinegars in there now, too. Although I see Sarah Hassler's on the call. Sarah, uh, I'm sorry if I'm doing this a little backwards, but, uh, but I, I'm mindful of the clock and I, I don't want to keep everybody longer than, than they need to be here. Okay. Get that cranking. Beans are cooking. All right. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, let's see. I talked about different parts of taste, flavor, aromatics, Flavor is a composite experience. It's taste, it's the, the basic tastes, uh, but it's also uh, mostly uh, aromatics too. You know the old test, if you have a slice of apple, you have a slice of pear, you hold your nose, you go to taste, you probably won't be able to really tell unless it's through a textural difference, uh, what the, what, which fruit is which. Um, so aromatics are, are definitely a part of it. <clears throat> and I'm getting the aromatic from the pepper is coming through right now. So, so again, important mouthfeel is part of it too. And next week I want to talk a little bit about texture in food and, um, <laughs> and how you might create contrast using texture, which is in addition to flavor. Okay. So I want to, Again, thank you all for coming on. Please, I think Ron might still be there. Maybe he is uh, leaving. Oh, you are? Okay, so Ron's still here. So if you have a question, send it, and, and Ron will, will get to it. But I have a question from um, Natalie about um, how to build a, a cream sauce using acid. So she's combining lemons and cream, and she wants to know, how you might best go about doing that. And um, my first reaction was to use lemon zest. You can also just use cream. If you, certainly if you, if you put lemon juice into a milk and you start to boil it, you start to add some heat, you're definitely gonna have some curdling. If you just heat milk up, sometimes it just curdles. So when you have it in a sauce, you have to have to be a little careful. Other things you can do is to maybe add a little bit of thickener, like a cornstarch or a flour, and um, and and that might give you a better result. But it's uh, it's definitely doable. Um, I tend to, as I said, tend to use lemon zest, but from what I read, you can also use uh, lemon juice as well. So you just have to make sure you're heating very slowly, very gently and uh, you're not bringing it to a boil, and uh, you're not introducing a cold milk into, um, into a sauce. So keep, keep the temperature as even as you can with the ingredients. <clears throat> so Natalie, thank you for that question. Uh, a suggestion I received from Robin, which uh, in terms of a flavor enhancer or something that she always has on hand, to introduce flavor is preserved lemon. This is a fresh lemon, it's not preserved lemon. But um, I know Robin has a great recipe for preserved lemons, but you can, you can find them out there. They're often used in Middle Eastern cooking and wonderful way to enhance the flavor of salad dressings, uh, vegetables, um, sauces. It's, it's really a, a, terrific, uh, a terrific thing to have on hand. So I highly recommend that. Okay, going back here, it's reduced quite a bit. Don't know if you can see. So that's what it's looking like now. 
Uh, we have uh, lots of different, we have the fruit, the onion, the peppers, and the, uh, the vinegar, the porter. So it's looking good. I'm going to put a little more juice in it just to have it a little juicy. I'm going to get the toast started, just lightly toasted. And then I'm going to finish with some parsley. And we're going to pretend that the toast is toasted. Got the beans already. And I probably would have enhanced the beans quite a bit with some, uh, maybe some other aromatics, maybe a little bit of onion, but these are, these are just straight up. Um, but this is part, this is phase one of recipe development and we'll have, we'll, we need to take it probably through two or three more phases to get it where we want it to be. Okay. So we're going to top it with the orchard sauce, a little bit of glaze on that. So there we go. Definitely different than what Nick Delapella would have eaten um, as a child during the Depression, but uh, but we have a, a mix of texture and the, the flavors. It smells really good, so hopefully those those uh, aromatics are going to kick in. So let's taste. This is uh, coming to you for the first time. I've totally decided on this this morning, so. Mm. Mm. Oh my. That's really good, actually. That would make a nice. Um, mm. So there's spice, which is balanced. I'm tasting the spices, which is balanced with the sweet. Um, there's a there's a bit of there's a little bitterness from I think the porter. Um, there's salt is coming in with the sour, certainly from the acid. Um, those are, they're all at play here and they, it actually works really well. This might be a nice little, uh, appetizer that you could do on a baguette and, um, and serve if people, you know, if, if you have a, uh, a meat eating crowd, this might be a, a nice little option. But for me, this, uh, this tastes really good as is, and I would definitely eat that as a, um, you know, as a main course or as, as a side dish. So, um, so anyway, I, I think that we are approaching our, um, our time. So if you have any questions, uh, please, please let us know. And, um, again, a plug for, Okay, so Ron is gone, so we're, we're done with questions. So uh, a plug for next week, which is uh, going to be on texture and <clears throat> and how recipes can, um, can also, we can maybe save recipes and do a recipe rescue if you have gone overboard on one thing or another. So... Um, <clears throat> So anyway, well, it was it was great to see you, and I hope that um, y you know you'll come and visit us again next week. I apologize for the the uh, awkward start, but uh, it's our first time, and uh, thanks again so much. It was really great to see you all and um, know that you're here. So keep the faith and keep cooking. It makes us human. It makes us better and it keeps us together. So hope you can join us again next week. Take care.